Developed by Edge Security, the Harvester is a command line program written in Python, which is to gather emails, subdomains, hosts, employee names, open ports, and banners from different public sources like search engines, PGP keys, and Shodan computer databases. You can download the Harvester from its GitHub page, https colon slash slash github dot com slash laramies, that's L-A-R-A-M-I-E-S slash the Harvester. It's also embedded in Kali Linux. When you run the script with no parameters, you can see the usage options. One of the usages of the Harvester tool is the Harvester dash D domain name dash L result limit dash B data source. When the script finishes its job, you can see the results. Emails and hosts found. Recon NG is a full-featured web reconnaissance framework written in Python, complete with independent modules, database interaction, built-in convenience functions, interactive help, and command completion. Recon NG provides a powerful environment. Recon NG has a look and feel similar to the Metasploit framework, reducing the learning curve for leveraging the framework. Recon NG is designed exclusively for web-based open source reconnaissance. If you want to exploit, you can use the Metasploit framework or any other exploitation tool. You can download the Recon framework on the website seen on this slide. And it's already embedded and ready to use in Kali Linux. When you run Recon NG script, you'll end up with a shell-like interface. Now you can use Recon NG commands. Type help to see the available commands. Type show modules to see the available modules. As you can see, there are a lot of modules. You can use search commands to find the modules we need. For example, we can type search XSS to find the module which is aimed to find out XSS vulnerabilities. Type use keyword with the module name to use the module. In this example, let's use recon slash domains hyphen vulnerabilities slash XSSED module. To learn more about the module type show information. This module checks XSSED.com website for XSS records associated with the domain. Type show options to see the parameters of the module. Set the source parameter value typing. Set source www.nhs.uk command. Type run to run the module. In this example, we found an XSS vulnerability for NHS.UK website was published in 2008. Even though we're almost sure it was fixed years ago, it's better to look and see if the vulnerability still exists, and more. You can see the color legend in the lower right corner. The results of the transform we ran a minute ago are here now. You can use the toggle full screen button or simply press Alt plus Enter buttons to toggle the graph to full screen. You can select the email addresses node and see the collective email addresses listed in the Detail View window. Right, so in this lesson, we're going to learn how to perform DNS enumeration with the DNS enum and DNS recon tools. So first of all, of course, what is DNS enumeration? In fact, what is DNS? Good question, so I'll answer them. So DNS, the domain name system, works at the application layer level of the OSI model. DNS is a system, and it's used to convert a computer's host name into an IP address on the Internet. For example, if a computer needs to communicate with the web server hackeracademy.uk, your computer needs the IP address of the web server, hackeracademy.uk. It is the job of the DNS to convert the host name to the IP address of the web server. DNS uses both UDP and TCP. Now, of course, if you need more information about this, you can just visit our DNS lesson in Section 2. So DNS enumeration 
It's one of the most popular discovery tasks available to create a profile of your target. It's the act of detecting and enumerating all possible DNS records from a particular domain name. This includes host names, DNS record names, DNS record types, TTLs, IP addresses, and a little bit more depending upon how much information that you're looking for. So after DNS enumeration is complete, unauthenticated users can then use this information to observe internal network records and obtain useful DNS information that allows the attacker to access a complete DNS map. Now, of course, there are many tools that can do DNS enumeration. We're going to first look at DNS enum and DNS recon. So first up, DNS enum is a command line utility that detects basic DNS entries, such as MX, mail exchange servers, NS, domain name servers, and A, the domain's address record. Now, it also attempts zone transfers on all identified servers and performs reverse resolution and brute force attacks on subdomains and host names. Secondly, DNS recon provides users the ability to execute a wide range of tasks, from security audits to basic network troubleshooting, it provides many features like DNS enum. So you can check DNS server cache records, enumerate general DNS records for a given domain, check all NS records for zone transfers, check for wildcard resolution, and it checks the brute force subdomain. So let's try some of these tools out. Open Terminal. So let's start with DNS enum. In this test, we are going to use zonetransfer.me for DNS enumeration because this website is developed specifically for getting experience about security problems related to DNS zone transfer. All right, so just write man DNS enum. And here you can see the description of DNS enum, options for DNS enum, and the usage of DNS enum. So I'm going to do a simple scan. So I'll write DNS enum zone transfer dot me. And there you see the scan starts. And of course, it'll take some time because it's a pretty large scan. So here are the results, the server names, mail servers, trying zone transfer, getting bind versions, brute force to find domains, reverse lookups on net ranges, as well as the results. All right, so secondly, we've got DNS recon. So right, man, DNS recon. You can see the description of DNS recon options and usage of DNS recon. And again, I'm going to do a simple scan. So I'll write DNS recon and the target IP address, which is zonetransfer.me. Okay, good. So what you're looking at are the server names and mail servers, as well as all kinds of stuff. So you can actually specify your scan and look for more deeper results. All right, so that is DNS enumeration, as well as how to use DNS enum and DNS recon. Now, another great discovery tool, including Kali Linux 2021.2, is NetDiscover. Now, this is a tool that can perform layer 2 discovery. NetDiscover is a simple ARP scanner. All right, so you can use it to search a network for live hosts. You can also search for multiple subnets. Now, when you're trying to access a network, you can utilize this tool in the early stages of a pen test. So it has many different features like simple ARP scan, um, and it works in both active and passive modes, produces a live display of identified hosts, and is able to scan multiple subnets, timing options, and all sorts of things. So we're going to see NetDiscover in action. 
So first, let's have a look at the manual of the NetDiscover tool. Type man NetDiscover and press enter. So here's the full definition of the NetDiscover tool. And you can read it completely all on your own. Um, I just want to show you a couple of the options and the descriptions of them. So right now, we are going to use the dash R option to specify the network range. So first, we'll have a look at the network address before scanning. So we'll open up terminal, write if config, and here's our IP address. So now we know which IP range that we're going to look at. So let's scan the network. Write sudo su double dash for root permission. Net discover dash r parameter for scanning a given range instead of auto scan. And the IP address, we can specify the range like writing slash 16 to the end of the IP address, right? So press enter. So it's going to search the network range for live hosts. And it may take some time. All right, so we've got the result of the live hosts. So now we have learned what NetDiscover is and how to use it. And we will be. Connection between your browser and the server so that even encrypted data can be viewed and modified within the proxy. All right, so in the last version of Burp Suite, you do not need to set up a personal proxy. You can use Burp Suite's browser. All right, so let's try to interrupt HTTP traffic with Burp Suite. Open up Terminal, write Burp Suite. And I'll use default Burp settings. I'll go to the Proxy tab. Now, you got to first make sure that intercept mode is off. Now, under the intercept tab, you can see the use burps embedded browser side. Click open browser. And now visit http colon slash slash nhs.uk. All right, so this website uses HTTP as its protocol. So type green or whatever you want into the search box, actually. In the upper right corner, go to Burp Suite and change the intercept mode to on. Now go back to the website, press enter to search the word on the website. The response is caught by Burp Suite. Find the word we search for in the request, change it, for example, yellow, press the forward button, now there will be following requests for the resources of the website which we are not interested in. Go back to the browser. And as you see, we sent green to search, but since we changed it using a personal proxy, we have a different result now. Let's see the best way to intercept HTTPS traffic using Burp. All right, so in the last version of Burp Suite, you do not need to set up a personal proxy. You can use Burp Suite's browser. All right, so let's try to interrupt HTTP traffic with Burp Suite. Open up Terminal, write Burp Suite. And I'll use default Burp settings. Go to the Proxy tab and first just make sure that intercept mode is off. Now under the intercept tab, you can see the use burps embedded browser side. Well, click on open browser. So I'll intercept the traffic of the page google.co.uk. Right, so we'll go to google.co.uk and I'm going to write OWASP in the search bar. So I'll open Burp and change the intercept mode to on, back to the browser, and hit Enter to search. 
Now click one time to forward. And here is our search request. Burp caught the request. I replaced the word OWASP with CI security. And turn the intercept off to allow the traffic flow. When I go back to Firefox, I see that the word CI security has been searched instead of OWASP. It works like a charm.